Hello, and welcome back to Beyond the Beyond, part 14. Well, look at this. I got six worth of courage. Guess what that means. Time for the level up power hour, domino version. Yes, there'll be different versions of this. You'll see why later on. But yeah, Domino's about to get really buffed. Like, big time here. Now, one thing that I actually noticed is that Domino doesn't exactly come with the best of speed, despite actually being known for his speed. This will make sense later on, but for now, he has about the speed that Samson had. But thankfully, he also has close the amount of strength he has, too. Making him just that much more awesome. And all my characters have run the same attack. Okay. Don't know, don't know how that happened, but okay. I think it just may have something to do with the fact that three of them are just mages that have the same exact weapon, and Finn hasn't gotten a weapon upgrade for a while. Mace, 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 blah. Basically, just so I could keep the speed. However, there's a problem with that. If his attack never grows, then his damage is going to stay at where it's at for quite a while. This will change later on, but for the time being, I'm really depending on his strength. Also, I love how the Angels of Piranha has a repair cost of 666. Hint, hint. Maybe it's a fallen Angels of Piranha. I don't know. And I don't know the proper pronunciation for a Piranha, so I'll just be calling it that. Someone can feel free to correct me. Also, a lot of the Bandor soldiers aren't interested in getting vengeance against Marion or anything. They are perfectly on board with having peace. Which, again, makes sense. If you'll recall, the Bandor Emperor was kind of... Um, brainwashed into the idea of ruling the world. I don't think he originally felt that way, but Shutad came and twisted his mind around to do basically what he wanted. So yeah, Shutad was literally behind everything. And like I said already, there's the downstairs here that I neglected before. Mainly because we couldn't get into this door before. But now we can get Bandor's ancient tablet. Now why Bandor has one and not the other kingdoms is never really explained. But we're gonna see um, these being used a little bit later. However, a good portion of this video, nothing really gets accomplished. It's basically traveling the seas and going to different locations. At least the locations they have access to. Yeah, this is another one of those games where you have to have multiple methods of transportation. And until you get the different methods, you're kind of stuck going to just a few areas. However, you don't have to wait all that long before you get a new vehicle, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, I don't know if you ever see um, the soldier that was locked up, but he is there. However, I've put this off long enough. I did put a poll on the Dragon's Den website asking me if I was going to play Samson, who was it going to be? Domino won by it, him being the only vote I ever got, actually. Yeah, not a lot of people really into the poll idea, which, in hindsight, probably wasn't a good idea, since only a few people knew about Beyond the Beyond for one. 
and I'm sure very few of them, like, watch these videos on a regular basis. It may take them a while to actually get to them. And at the rate I'm going through this game, that didn't give them a lot of notice. So yeah, I really wasted my time doing that. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but Domino has the unique ability of having full attack power even from the back row. And he's the only character that has this power. It is useful though, I'll give him that. Domino doesn't exactly have as much attack growth as the rest of your characters are going to have throughout the game. But the fact that he can attack from the back row is very useful. However, um, traveling in the boat is very dangerous. You can attract some very nasty creatures on the boat. Oh, hello Pyrohydra, that I did not see in the volcano. Yeah, these guys were just nasty. Get rid of them post-haste. Dark Elves are equally as dangerous, since they're very fast and have some of the most powerful spells in the game. Well, not out of the entire game, but... Thunder Level 2 is up there, able to do 20 plus to your entire party. And while I do get lucky in this fight... Oh wow, that was lucky. Um, I don't get so lucky later on in this video. Oh yeah, you're gonna see me get my bug here later on in this video. Dark Elves suck. Mostly just because they're really fast. And they do tend to spam their magic more often than other enemies do. Also, Domino doesn't seem to have a victory stance. He just stands there like he's saying, Victory stance? I don't need one. I'm freaking Domino, man. I'm awesome as it is. And I can't really argue with that point. Also, you're going to see me circle around this island, even though there's no real way to get on it due to the rocks. I are smart. But I actually mistake this for another island that I'm supposed to be going to. I do manage to visit all the locations though before the video's over, so the next video is definitely going to have some leveling up, because I cannot prog progress the story anymore until a special event takes place. You're going to see what that event is going to entail very shortly. It's not really all that bad, but... Um, and I only need, really, a couple of levels. There is a slight problem, though. Um, this game feels pretty long, but it's really not. As a matter of fact, a good portion of the game is actually already over. Once I get through the next storyline event, I'm pretty much going through the last few areas of the game. I say that, but really, getting through the last few areas takes quite a while, due to the sheer size of the areas. I mean, there's not that many, but they're considerably, considerably longer than, than the other dungeons we've been through. So yeah, that's going to be fun to actually record. I do kind of wish that they would have added more to the second part of the game though, because people did feel kind of chipped. Understandably so. Ugh, not Edward. I also get a nifty spell in this update that I freaking love to death. Oh, you sucker! Yeah, the enemies are very annoying sometimes. Wind level 2 isn't exactly all that great of a spell, but it can be useful if you combine it with other magic. Also, 
So, Edward gained a significant amount of speed in the last couple of videos. Huh. Don't know how that works, but okay. Also, if you'll recall, I got something called a Cloak of Wind. At least I think it was the Cloak. That gives a permanent speed bonus to my two mages. I've never gained rid of that. Because I don't think you get an armor that's so powerful that it makes up for the speed loss. So, armor for them is going to be pretty useless. I think Domino is probably going to be, like, the one who benefits from armor the most later on. And you're going to see why. Oh, and we see Griffins now, too. They have the defense properties of the Gargoyles, plus they're faster, and they have pretty good attack, too. Holy crow, oh, jeez. Yeah, this is not a good enemy group for me. I think this is where the part of the game where magic is going to be very useful. And as such, I'm going to have to stock up on Mage Potion. Because my magic is going to start going really fast. Also, the enemies really love abusing the turn count in which they can easily keep people knocked out almost the entire battle. So you really have to depend on the AI not spamming magic too much. Domino is freaking awesome though. I know there are times when it looks like Domino's attack is weak, but it's really not. It's just sometimes the... Um, Active turns battle system doesn't cooperate with me. Again, it, there's that luck factor that's annoying. Taunt being fast in this playthrough though has helped a lot, as proven here. I honestly couldn't pick a better person to give all those speed potions to. Because Ton's high attack and powerful summon spells has saved my neck on numerous occasions. I've also noticed that I'm spending a lot more time actually talking about the game this time around. And last time, actually. That's pretty nice. I think I got a low sidetrack last video, but it wasn't quite as bad as I was thinking. Holy crap, this lobby XP. That's the spell I was talking about. Holy Light Level 3. Oh man, I cannot emphasize enough how useful that spell can be at times. I did have to make a few trips back to town to heal up my MP. Because at the time, I really was trying to save up my gold. In case I needed it for something good. Unfortunately, as it turns out, there aren't really all that many upgrades for me to get, but having a lot of money never hurt anyone, especially later on in the game. Because there are some things I'd want to buy. Also, there is a MP trick, I mean, an experience trick that you can abuse if you want to sequence break a little bit. I don't demonstrate it in this video, but I will in the next, and it is abusable, but also a little dangerous. Anyone who's probably played this game knows what I'm talking about, because it becomes available once you get the ship. However, the problem with this area is that there's going to be a lot of tough monsters, and as such, the monsters tend to be pretty um, dangerous for you to fight, and they're also going to be much faster than you, which means they become a lot more luck-based than anything else. The experience is great, but for a reason I'm going to get into next video, I would not recommend it. 
because it gets annoying really fast. Yeah, the Fire Breath and the Hellhounds can get old pretty fast, but it can only hit one person, so it's ultimately harmless. Hmm. My second attempt on the seas goes much more effective than the first. Mostly just because I do end up realizing that, that the island I'm supposed to be searching for is much further south. So I don't waste as much time searching around that one island. There's not really that much open to you. I think there's only like three rough areas you can get to that you haven't been anyway. And the rest of the areas are either unreachable or just places that, well, you've already been to. Trying to, I'm trying not to sound repetitive here. So, unless you really like going, going into the, holy crap, confusion level two. No, 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 Get, get confusion off. Get it off. I do not like confusion in this fight. I actually forgot they had that. Um, when I saw them use it, I was scared of Willis. Because with those kind of Dark Elves out, and half my party being confused, if they hadn't died right there, then I might not have, um, um, been as, been as successful. And that is why I like Fully Light Level 3. Annie is usually your second fastest after Domino, which will happen later. And her Fully Light Level 3 is just about on terms of damage output with Tarn's summon skills. So with the two of them, you can kill most foes in a single turn before they can even get out there. If you feel like wasting the magic. You don't always have to rely on that, but it's great that it's there. Because believe me, this can get old real fast. Also, the fact that the Light Orb costs no MP and can take you anywhere is really helpful. Now, it, it doesn't work like a miracle skill, like it won't take you back to like a dungeon or anything. But considering the fact that most of the dungeons have already been pretty much taken care of right now, that's not really an issue. However, there are some slight exceptions to Light Orb, as you can only use it on the world map. And there are some dungeons where you can use the escape spell, so you need to be really careful. And for the for the first like 18 minutes, I forgot I had the world map. Again, I are smart. Though I think the biggest thing is it's just because um, once you're done with the uh, bows, you usually won't need the wood map again. As a matter of fact, they make it hard to use it. You'll see why later. The wood map really isn't all that huge, though. Because there's only a few areas that aren't including dungeons that we haven't been to. Though there's one place in question that we haven't been to yet. That is freaking awesome. We won't be there for quite a while yet, though. However, when we do get there, it's just awesome. Aside from that, though, there's really not really much to say. I mean, a good portion of this video is going to be on the scene. I apologize for this, I know it's not exactly the most exciting of videos to be sure, since 
Well, let's face it, a good portion of it is me just fighting foes on the boat. Because of how long it takes to get from place to place on this thing. Mind you, the random encounter rate on the boat doesn't help, since... It seems, like, it seems at least to me that the random encounter rate on the boat is like at least double what it is on land, so... It takes me a while to get anywhere on there. Oh yes, and they love their magic enemies. Just about every fight will have at least one of them. Which makes this really, really annoying. I try to preserve it for preserve MP where I can, but that's kind of difficult. As such, I start to rely a lot more on Mage Potion. I don't know how many I used in this actual video, but rest assured I have to go through a few of them. And this is the island I was actually talking about. It too was started by rocks, but there's actually a space on this island that you can get through. You just gotta find it. As a matter of fact, it's important that you go to this island, because you can't go forward into the game until you do. Yeah, some things in this game are kind of annoying, and I would say this was one of them. Mainly just because the first time I played this game, I honestly had to um, dig out the typed out strategy guide that we got from online, you know, back before we knew about game facts, in order to help us out. Because half the time we didn't know what we were doing, and in some cases we had to call the um, special hotline for video games, PlayStation video games. And much to our shock, we were able to find someone who knew a lot about the Beyond the Beyond. As a matter of fact, I am surprised we found someone that knew as much about it as we did, because... I didn't really question it back then, but thinking on it now... The PlayStation Hotline must have, like, had thousands of people... Um, that played different types of video games to help out, because... Beyond the Beyond, even back then, wasn't exactly the most beloved game in the world. And I'm pretty sure not that many people had it. So finding someone that actually had the game and knew how to play it was pretty incredible. It really did, did remind me of Nintendo's um, phone number and hotline for a way back on the Super Nintendo, but... Well... Anyway, this here is Discipline Town. As a matter of fact, it's very important to the game in total. If you recall, I told you that this game was based on Shining Force. And in Shining Force, once you got far enough to the game, you could go to Enlightenment, basically, which means once you got to a certain level, you could change your class. Though, Shining Force's ways of changing classes was pretty much just become a stronger version of the one you had. Wow, Finn is such a ladies' man. First Annie, then the girl and Luna, and now this lovely lady. Jeez, everywhere he goes, he just finds people that are impressed with him. That's just incredible. This is probably the best that the shops are going to get until the Enlightenment happens. However, unlike games like Shining Force, the Enlightenment is actually a plot point. Which sadly means you cannot skip it. Because if you know anything about the class changing, or enlightenment as this game calls it, 
then the higher level you are before you do it, the better you're gonna be. Why is that? Well, class changing in the Shining Force series takes you all the way back to level 1. Yeah, I'm spoiling this a little bit, but you're needing an explanation of why I'm doing this. So here we go. Um, you go all the way back to level 1, and the experience required for leveling up goes down by half. Yes, it only goes down by half, so... Even though you're level 1, it takes an insanely long time to level up. It's, it's very easily compared to Lord Class Monsters and the Dragon Warrior Monster series, where they're strong, but they take forever to level up. It's very easily compared to that. So, because of this, you are pretty much advised to wait at least level 26 or 27. I will probably be doing it at 25, we'll see. And, well, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. However, there are a few things you need to be aware of, if you haven't figured it out already. One, enlightenment allows you to get spells that you probably couldn't get in your default. As you level up, you will probably go at least 11 or 12 levels without getting a single spell. That's because there's a level limit on gaining the different abilities. If you aren't enlightened, then you'll win and you won't get any spells until you do so. Additionally, characters are chip and equipment as well. The really high class equipment you cannot use in your lower class. So, if you don't, go through enlightenment, you're stuck with weak equipment. Keep this in mind for later. Also, um, once you get to a turn level, I believe level 30 on, you will stop gaining stat points. Which, essentially, okay I love this, I don't get into a single battle on the world map at all. Just watch. Are you serious? And, and look at that. I get on the boat, and there's the battle. What, are the mountains just monsterless for some reason? Hmm. Huh. But anyway, because of the way alignment works, level 30 is essentially the limit for gaining your stuff. The only exception to this is if you gain a truckload of levels, like, let's say you got, like, level 50 with your people, god forbid, um, and then you went to enlightenment. It calculates the levels needed for gaining skills when you change your class. So if you were, like, if you needed to be a combined level of 52 to gain all your class skills, then the very next level you would get them all. It keeps track of all those levels. Oh yeah, I love how Domino, like, runs up to the enemy full strength and stabs them with his daggers. What he does, the uppercut. It's just funny. At first I thought it was because of his weapon, and I wanted to see if the animation would change. But it doesn't, so it's just the uppercut that does that. But, if you really wanted, like, to have all your stuff, um, at the very next level, when you change your class, then feel free to do that, but I give you a warning though, it will take you forever to get to that kind of level with the limited experience they give you. Even if you do the experience trick, where you can get lots and lots of experience, it will still take you about four or five days to get to that level. Just a fair warning. But yeah, I'm not doing anything near as ridiculous as that. Though, if I recall, I remember when my grandma played this game, she did just that. 
She got as high as like level 40 or 50. Mostly because we didn't really know the formula behind alignment. So we actually thought that. Um, let's see, what was I going to say? We actually thought that the higher level you are, the more stats you would en end up with when you. I cannot hear a coherent sense at it, because I'm getting tired. We, we thought that the higher level you were when you went to alignment, the better off you would actually be when you clashed in. Like the minute you clashed in, we thought all the stats would carry over to that. So, Grandma did just that. She got as high as level 50, which was the limit of her patience. Don't ask me how she had the patience to even get that high. It is beyond me. Um. Anyway, this is Leave Village. There's nothing really special about it, but this is where you can do the experience trick. Um, I, I will be demonstrating it, but you basically go left, um, or west of Leave, near the mountains, and just fight around there. You'll fight some of the toughest creatures in the game. I will demonstrate why it's a bad idea, though. But, yeah, we were dead wrong about it having to do with stats, but she did have just about every spell that you can learn, naturally, in just one level's worth of time. Also, don't ask me why she wanted to do this, but she got to, like, the final dungeon of this game, and literally trained all her party members in level 99. I am not kidding about that. She literally sat there in the final dungeon, ready to beat it, but waited until she was level 99. Yeah, if you're gonna find out, that is an absurdly amount of strength. Like, this game is difficult, yes, but once you get to that kind of level, it the difficulty becomes basically Fall Fantasy standards of difficulty. Nothing will even touch you at that point. As a matter of fact, it was so easy that I don't even think the final boss got in like more than three or four turns. And once, once we get to that point, you're going to see how sad that actually is. Now if you search the bushes and leave, you can get some kind of rare items, if you search the right one. It takes me a while to actually find it, though. Hmm. Where was that? I honestly couldn't tell ya. All the bushes look the same to me. It's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. Oh, where is it? Ah! There it is. Revive me. The Reviving Herb is the only item in the game that has the power to bring someone back from death without taking them to the church. Death means no HP and no LP. Mind you, death doesn't happen all that often, so this item doesn't have a whole lot of use. And yeah, the sight from the bridge was very breathtaking. Also, at this point in the game, they love to give you very powerful cursed equipment. And if you're curious what it does, it just puts the curse on you that Samson pretty much had. Though at the very least, this curse can be um, disposed of by going to a church. Not so much with Samson's, but we're over that by now. Yeah, they just love to give this stuff to you, though. And a lot of it sells for a pretty price. Despite, you know, being virtually useless to us at all. But then again, Dragon Warrior was al also pretty well known about doing this.
And I don't know why I decided to go searching the pot and bed more, since I think I've already tried that. But whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna take stamps all the way to leave. Just so I don't have to go all that far on the boat again. That would not be nice. Considering how strong the monsters in the boat are and all. There's only one other area we can access right now. And it's a bit of a doozy. And it almost takes all the remaining time we have left in the video to make it there. Is this pretty nasty? So, at the very least, we do get a cutscene out of it. That's freaking awesome, by the way. You'll see what that is when we get there. trying to stay on topic for this video, since the very next one isn't probably going to have all that much in it. Aside from showing off the experience trick, I'm going to be doing the level grind of Destiny. There won't be as much to it as I originally planned, but oh well. I might need another one down the road when I get to the final area. Because trust me, as short as this game is, I'm not going to be at that high of a level once I actually get there. But I don't really mind. Plus, I am still trying to keep this game kind of difficult, just for the let's play. Because one thing I learned from watching um, Uber Wall a long time ago is difficulty may not matter at first, but it really does have a lot to do with an entertaining let's play. Because if you're going to an area and just plow right through it with no difficulty whatsoever, and if, if it's a turn based RPG, then it becomes essentially a bun masher, and the viewer, honestly, probably doesn't know how he's supposed to feel about it. Because I've seen people play RPGs, like, as a let's play, so... So, I am one of them. And I know a lot of people say, Ooh, no, you're not supposed to let's play turn-based RPGs, because they're boring, and no one will enjoy them. I obviously don't agree with them, but I do agree that if you're going to do them, you have to know what you're doing, first of all. I'll talk about the second bit in a second. It's fairly annoying. Um, but you have to really know what you're doing when you do a turn-based RPG. And to be honest, I don't even know if I can do mine justice because... Yeah, I'm trying to keep it as entertaining as humanly possible, but it's really hard to maintain that. And I can really understand where people come from. When I get finished with Beyond the Beyond, I'll probably be focusing a lot more on other types of genres, including a special type of Let's Play that... Oh yeah, I just noticed, the Succubus Sprite has bouncing grass. That are completely open. They're not that noticeable, mind you, but... Yeah, as I mentioned before, with the Nagas, they really took liberties with the sprites with this game. Yeah, they really took advantage of the 3D that this game had, with the different designs. I mean, some of them are nice, but other ones are just stupid. Yeah, just because it said Domino is awesome, doesn't mean he's perfect. He can miss. Despite the fact that he does have a throwing weapon, which... These types of weapons are usually a lot more accurate, but whatever. 
he's still pretty awesome to have around. And I do like him a lot better than Samson, because at the very least, he has magic to fall back on if attacks aren't any good. Anyone who's played Dragon Warrior 2 will recognize the part of the game. Holy crap, I'm dead knight. No, no, go away. Go away. I hate, 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 hate this guy. These, this is one of the enemies you'll face if you go to the experience area. You're not supposed to fight this guy till really close to the end of the game. He doesn't have a whole lot of health, but his attacks can do like 30 to 40 damage. And he, they have access to the attack spell, which means they technically can do like up to 70 and 80 at this point. Don't, I'm not even going to ask how I'm getting this lucky with him, but I am not going to question it. They are weak to fire though. Somewhat. Also, Taunt gets one more elemental summon. Yeah, that's not the right path. In Dragon Warrior 2, he also had to do something like this, where you had to go down a stream of swords. A, a river. Or a canal, I guess you could call it. In order to navigate a canal to find a secret area. The one in this game isn't really as bad as the one from Dragon Warrior 2, but it can still take a while to actually get to. And the distance you have to go through to get to it is much bigger. So, keep that in mind. And I completely forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, my new schedule after the end of Beyond. I am going to be doing what Kevin calls a Let's Fail series. Basically, it's going to show me play a game that's really hard. And I will have, will have no intention of actually beating it. Though I might. A bunch of ideas been thrown around, like me doing a special I Want to Be the Guy series of videos, where I will pretty much play one idea that Kevin and I thought about is, before I say that, the Venom Giant is like the others, but they have a Venom critical, that's it. But anyway, I want to be the guy. Um, I thought about actually having a set of videos where I play the impossible mode, I believe it's called, and see how far I get. I have a couple of videos of me playing it, and we'll see just how far I can get without failing. Keep in mind if I do this, I'm not really an expert, I want to be the guy player, so odds are I probably won't be very good at it. And my commentary isn't very angry either, so you're not going to see me getting mad probably at all. So I don't know if you'll enjoy it. And I go the long I go the wrong way here. You have to go where that forest is. Trust me, without a guide, it's very hard to find this area. I also thought about playing such games as Bard vs. the Space Mutants and for the NES and Milan Secret Castle, also for NES, as well as a few other games. But that experience that never could be. It's an interesting idea to say the least, and I might be really into that. I'm probably going to make a thread about it on the Dragon's Den and see if there's anyone that's interested in that. But anyway, on to the new area. The enemies here are a bit higher class than the other ones, but they are also a little slower. For example, Succubus give a lot of experience to gold, but they're slower than Dark Elves, giving me a great advantage over them. Which is one of the reasons I prefer to fight here over the other area. 
because I can actually live. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Let's see. That's really all I really, really have to talk about. Because I haven't made any plans other than that. At least, that doesn't have to do with my life. Kevin did say I need to try to keep a lot more of my conversations in the game centered around my let's plays and not other things I'm doing. Because he did bring up a good point that a lot of people might be turned off by this. I don't know if that's true or not, but... Um, it's something I'm always afraid of, though. And it's something that I've dealt with in the past, but... People said my let's play sucked because I don't talk about the game. A big problem with this is just that this is post-game commentary, so I don't have anything to talk about while I'm actually recording it. Now, if I can get a setup to where I can record this and have good audio, then I could go back to it being cut normal commentary where I talk while I'm playing the game. Until then, though, we're just going to have to deal with this. So I apologize for that. Hmm. I'm also looking at my um, audio converter, and apparently my commentary is two seconds ahead of the audio. Huh. Don't know how that happened, but oh well. Because I know I tested the two, and they were um, completely on the same time as each other when it started. And it's probably my computer being annoying again. Oh well, it'll be good enough. Just as long as we've not sound the de desync of the video, I'm usually fine with it. Because that just gets annoying after a while. And I hate it when it happens to me. Hmm. We're almost... we've almost ran out of time in the video, so I've got to hurry this up. I'm also running out of MP, so I need to get to this place post-haste. Oh! Dear God. There's lots of succubi in this battle. I do not like these these girls. They have very powerful magic attacks. I believe Ice Level 2 is one of them. It's not as strong as Thunder Level 2, but it can still hurt you quite a bit. And now, we have finally arrived at our location. And where's this place? Do tell. It's the Barbaros Kingdom. Wasn't Shutaf supposed to be coming here? I don't know, the guy has like nuclear missiles, or I mean nuclear, like, cannons, so I would be careful with him. Holy crap! For, for, for early PS1 standards, that's pretty impressive the way to design that flip.
yeah, the soldier guy just said that's dying. Are oh, you deaf? Yes, it is. Now, this place has a bunch of hardened soldiers, except for the princess, who is actually very kind and whatnot. I see. Legendary Heavenly Ship? What? Of course. Eh, not really. <laughs> I like this guy, he's awesome. Oh, boulder dash on that. What the heck? I'm surviving all these fancy creatures. Doesn't that mean anything to you? And really, this is... Once I actually show you how, it, how easy it actually is to complete this trial, you're gonna hate this guy even more. Because really, a standard warrior can probably beat that trial if he knows it well enough. The stun rod is annoying. It gives higher attack power, but you get no damage bonus from getting a critical at all. Which, in turn, makes it kind of crappy. So I'm going to be completely skipping that. Oh yes, and the subjects are sexist. Wonderful. Yeah... The more characters you have, the more you have to spend on them. And as such, the profits would have to be split in order for each party member to have equal stuff. So having more and more party members isn't always a good idea. Which is why they say five party members is usually like the best bet to travel with anyway. And I really have to agree with it. Having any more than that really gets annoying fast. Especially in a game that doesn't like to give you much money. And I believe this is where we're gonna call it. Yep. See you later, everyone.